day, a special day, as all days are special days. But in the life of the church, certainly resurrection morning, resurrection day is a special time in the church. We've had a wonderful week of Holy Week, Wednesday, good service. We heard the prayers and concerns of our church, and we had a message that told us to get ready. On Monday, Thursday, we had a very inspiring service where we had an opportunity to wash the feet of those who came. On Friday, our lay servants led us in worship, whereas each who had a part to give God's inspiration to them as an interpretation of the seven last words that Christ uttered from the cross. And this morning, we had early sunrise service over at Oak Cliff Park, and we had a wonderful time, whereas Sister Ramirez led us in a reenactment of resurrection morning activities. We had a good time celebrating our Lord and Savior, as this is one of the most high times in the life of the church. And we want to thank everyone who participated, everyone whose presence was here, for those who helped, for those who prayed, for those who preached, for those who urged, for those who gave. These beautiful flowers, don't they smell good? Don't they look good? For everyone who has played a part in making this Holy Week a very special week here at Dallas, India. Thank you all, and thank God for you. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we are thankful for all that we have seen and heard. We're thankful for your divine grace and mercy. We're thankful, Father, that you have led us to a point and through your divine sovereignty, we are here. We're here, Father, not because we are deserving of it, but it's because of your divine mercy and grace and love for us that you have so sovereignly allowed us to be a part of the day. We ask, Father, that you would give us hearts and minds to take full advantage of the blessings and the benefits of the blessings that you are bestowing upon us, that we will not let a moment go by without moving, without talking, without thinking that you are God and God alone. We ask, Father, now that you would come and hide me behind your cross, that these, your people, will hear what you want them to hear, no matter what I say or do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We have for a scripture reference. It's part of a very familiar story, very familiar occurrence that if you've been in the church any length of time, you've heard many a sermon about the resurrection of our Lord. It is the cornerstone of our faith and as Jesus' resurrection is a part of who he is. In fact, we learn by reading the scripture that the resurrection is not an activity. It is not a quote-unquote ingredient of 
faith that resurrection is a person. And that person is Jesus Christ. For he told Martha that I am the resurrection and the life. So we're talking about a person on this resurrection day of being who he is as Jesus, the resurrection. But we want to look at a piece of scripture that is a part of the resurrection morning story. It is taken from the Gospel of John the 20th chapter, the ninth verse. And I like the new international version of the translation of our Bible. And it reads, they still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Most of your trans Relations will say that Jesus must rise from the dead. But I, I like this had to. It, for me, is a bit more personable. It's a bit more what I can relate to. I understand must. But I like had to. Have you ever been in a situation where you had to do something? It was very uncomfortable for you not to do what you had to do. It was something that stirred your emotions or feelings where you just could not rest unless you did it. You had to do it. If you must do something, it sounds like you're ordered to do something. Like you must go to the store. Even though you don't want to, you must. And someone is making you do something. But had to, to be, gives a personal accountability that you have brought in to whatever ideal it is that you have taken it upon your self as a responsibility that you must or you have to do. The Greek translation for the word must or the auxiliary verb had is the Greek word da, D-E-I, da, which means it is a necessity to get something done. It is incumbent on that person, that person is compelled to do something, to accomplish something. Die. It has an etymology of deo, which simply means that I am bound to do something as a husband and wife are bound to each other. So had to brings a bit more of a personable accountability to having to do something. And here in the scripture, John gives us that when he and Peter arrived at the tomb, they both witnessed that the tomb was empty. They both witnessed the linen that was neatly folded there. And then they believed the report of the woman Mary that said that Jesus was not there. <coughs> because as of yet, as verse 9 indicates, 
They did not believe that Jesus had to rise from the dead. There is a companion verse or verses that goes along with this verse. It is found in Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 44 through 46. When Jesus visited them in his resurre resurrected form, the disciples there in the room where they were locked and they were talking with the two disciples that came back from Emmaus and said that they had seen the Lord. Then Jesus appeared in their midst and he said, according to Luke, I told you so. These things that has happened to me is because it was prophesied in the books of Moses and the prophets and in the song I told you so I told you that I would suffer that I would be crucified and then on the third day <coughs> I would rise again. That is what I told you in the 46th of verse of the chapter 24 of Luke. It says that it is written that Messiah must die and rise again on the third day. All of the Old Testament scriptures as we call them, the Hebrew Bible as they call it, predicted, promised, said, declared, proclaimed that Jesus would rise on the third day. The Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, <coughs> as well as the New Testament, we take as God's written word. And if God said it, then he had to do it. For had to means to me that God's word is faithful. And if God is not faithful to his word, then we will have doubts about the resurrection as well as anything else that went on in Christ's life. God had to because God said so. And God is not like us as men and women who lie. God cannot lie. God do not lie. It is his word that we depend upon. It is by his word that we are here now. It is by his word that the heavens were made. It was by his word that the earth was made. It is by God's word that we can rest assured that everything contained in our Bible, everything that was captured in the original autographs or manuscripts, is true. <coughs> Thus, if God said it, then God had to make sure that it came into fruition. He had to do it. We learn in the book of Genesis that even before Adam and Eve sinned, God had already made a path for them. We call that the proto evangelium That this Jesus would get a bruise on his heel, but he would crush Satan's head. That God had a plan of redemption already in place. And God said it, and God did it. Because he had to. God had to because God said so. Amen. Jesus had to because Jesus is a fulfillment of every Old Testament prophecy. That's good news to us. It indicates to us that at each juncture of history, God has been in control. When everything seemed so chaotic and so out of control, 
God has been in control. The crucifixion was a, a result of people not liking Christ and people wanting to gain political power and people wanting to do whatever they wanted to do with Christ. It wasn't that. It was God being in control because ultimately God said he would send a redeemer and that redeemer was Jesus and God said it to so God had Amen. to do it. Amen. That's good news. That in our lives, no matter how chaotic things seem to be, no matter how low things seem to be, no matter how many disappointments that you have, God is still in control. God allows, God causes things to happen in our lives to teach us, to encourage us, to pick us up. To be there when nobody else is there. To let you know that you can depend on him and what he says. No matter what anyone else says. And that's good news. That is good news. Jesus had to die. And thank God Almighty, he had to be raised from the dead on the third day. Why? Because he said so. If God says so, then it is so. He had to because of his love for us. His everlasting and steadfast love for us. Where he saw myself, he saw you, he saw everyone missing the mark, being sinful, being depraved, being wicked. And he had to, out of his steadfast love for us, he had to do what he did. He had to get up that morning to let us know that we will go through hard things, even death. But he is sure to see us through that dark hour. That he loves us so much in spite of who we are and what we've become and how we have missed the mark and how we have let him down, he still loves us. It's a steadfast love. He had to get up to show us that there is hope even beyond the grave. That he is the receipt of the payment. That his resurrection gives evidence that when we die, we who are in him shall be raised like him. He had to do it to give us assurance that his word is sure that when we go through this reality of life, there is a next reality of life and that whosoever believeth on the name of Jesus the Christ will inherit eternal life. And we, like him, will have resurrected bodies and to live with him forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't that good news? That's good news. Amen. So we have a receipt as being the resurrection. A receipt that payment was due on Calvary's cross and payment was made on Calvary's cross. And the receipt of that is evidence that he got up as the resurrection. Amen. If you're any from anywhere familiar with accounting, you, you have to have a, a paper trail. You, you have to have evidence of the transaction that has gone on before. You have to have proof that payment was made, all that services was rendered, and payment was received. The resurrection is evidence that Jesus, what he did on Calvary's cross, was sufficient to cover all of 
our sins. That he paid a price that we could not pay for ourselves. That payment was made. And on the third day, he arose Amen. and gave us the receipt. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He had to because of his name's sake. God's name is resurrection. He is the door. He is the light. He is the way. He is truth. His name gives us the assurance that he is Jehovah Rapha. He is healer. <coughs> that he is the Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will see to it, or the Lord will provide. Amen. For his name's sake, he had to get up from the grave to prove to us, to give receipt to us, that he is the great I am. He is whatever we need him to be. If you need a savior, he is the savior. If you need a way, he is the way. If you need a friend, he is a friend that sticks closer than any close relative. God is who he is, who he said he is. Amen. For his name's sake, we receive salvation. For Acts 4 and 12, and salvation is only by this one person. That is through Jesus and his name. That there is no other name given on this earth. Whereas we by can receive salvation. It is at the name of Jesus that every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. He had to. He had to give us something that we can depend upon when everything else is falling apart. He had to assure me that though I weep at night, joy comes in the morning. He had to give me hope that when I close my eyes in death, I shall be with him and be at rest. He had to Give me forgiveness. He had to give me encouragement. He had to look at me and say, J.B., it's not by your name, but by my name. You are healed. Amen. You are saved. Amen. He had to. When he looks at us, and he sees us in the state that we are in, he has to. He has to bring us to him. He has to love us still. He has to forgive us when we ask for forgiveness. He has to take care of us when we think no one cares about us. He has to lift up the head. He has to give comfort. He has to give consolation. He has to do that. Why? Because he said so. He said, no, I will be with you. Even until the end of the age. He has to because he said, I will never ever leave you or forsake you. He has to because he said so. He had to. Amen? amen. And amen. amen.